Well, I got real sick. Um, I got cancer, and I never, never was sick before. And I got cancer behind my, in my sinuses, a big tumor. And then I, a lot of other problems from the radiation and all that that they were giving me. I ended up in, uh, on the ventilator for 21 days. And then I woke up and I'm in hospice. And, um, you know, they told me where I was and stuff. And I called my brother up and I said, I'm not dying. I, I'm not dying here in New Jersey. I said, can you find me a houseboat or a pontoon boat? And I'll just live on that for four months, you know, four or five months. So the next day he called me up and he goes, you won't believe it, I found you a boat. And he sent me pictures of this, and I bought it. I bought it that day. Well, the next day after that, and I got on the boat 2000, uh, February 16th of 2017. And I figured I'd live three, four months, and I'd be done. No, all my plans got screwed up. I lived long, longer, six months, seven months. So I'm like, well, well now what am I going to do? So one day I got up and I'm going down the river. So I ended up going down the river, and I'm still here, over two years. With this houseboat, we, we had a we had a call yesterday. Um, a gentleman called us from um, Delacroix and said that there's a, a a person coming down river with a houseboat that's taking in water, and they put some 55 gallon drums underneath to keep him floating. And they wanted to know if it was possible if he made it to Delacroix if if, if we would pick him up and get him on dry dock and. Of course, we don't turn anyone down. So uh, he came in yesterday, we picked him up, and we brought him on dry dock, and you can see the pontoons on, a, on the bottom of this boat. He was, he was taking in water all the way to the top of them pontoons. Um, and the only thing that kept him floating, like I was telling y'all, the 55 gallon drums, if you want to take a look at it, we can walk under. All right, and there was 55 gallon drums that he had him strapped in with these straps to help him keep afloat. And then if you look back this way, he's got another whole row of them that he's strapped under. And, and without these barrels that was under here, he'd have went down. There was no way that he would have made it. So then once we got him up, there's, there's a lot of damage to the bottom of his pontoons. Uh, he got caught up on some rocks and it bust a few holes in the bottom of the, his pontoons. But he's going he's gonna to get them all welded up and get him back overboard. But if we wouldn't have got him up, there's no telling... Uh, He'd have went down somewhere, maybe in the river. But uh, he's all back on dry dock. He, he came from uh, Wisconsin, from what I understand. Um, he come a long ways down. Um, and got to our shipyard, and we got him up, and we're going we're gonna to get him back in the water in a couple of days. The boat is from 72, and they're steel pontoons. So, you know, they've been rotting away for, you know, years. And in Wisconsin, you got to remember in Wisconsin, this boat's only in the water for maybe four months, maybe five, and then they pull it out for the winter. You can't leave no boats in the water up there, it freezes. So, I mean, I've had it in the water for two years, so that takes away, you know. But it's from 72, I mean, but you know what, I love it. It's just, it's a mess now, I mean, it's been beat up bad, but I'm still on it. He was caught up in the last storm out there with, uh Hurricane Barry, and it wasn't. Of course, you could see the walls was all pushed in from from the waves that was hitting him, and uh, told me it broke out the windows, it knocked the television off the off the counter. Uh, so he, he he took some damage. One guy over in uh, Hopedale came by, stopped and see me. He's from over here. He's got a place over here, but he come over and we were talking, and I said, you know, he goes, my boat's not sitting so well, and I said, yeah, I, I really need to get pulled out again. And he, he uh, got a hold of him and got, you know, got me pulled out. The guy with the white cowboy hat. The guy with the white cowboy hat. I remember that when I, when I pulled up over, when he pulled up, I'm like, I heard about you because <laughs> the cowboy hat. But yeah, so, uh, you know, that's how I got a hold of him and stuff. People are fantastic over here. I, I would never been able to do it without them. Never. I've been so fortunate and so blessed. It makes tears come to my eyes every time I think about how good people are. People are fantastic.